Imagine standing on the edge of a vast, untamed ocean tens of thousands of years ago. The world is locked in the grip of an ice age. Glaciers carve through continents like slow-moving rivers of stone, and the seas whisper secrets of lost lands, now swallowed by rising waters. You're not just any wanderer. You're part of a daring band of early humans. Your feet calloused from endless journeys across frozen tundras and lush, predator-filled jungles. But here's the twist. Your blood carries echoes from ghosts of the past, extinct relatives like Neanderthals and Denisovans, whose DNA weaves through your veins like threads in an ancient tapestry. And stranger still, hints of far-off peoples from distant islands, carried across impossible distances. This isn't fantasy. It's the prehistoric reality unearthed by modern science. Today, we're diving deep into the enigmatic origins of South America's first inhabitants, unraveling a story of migrations that defy what we thought we knew about human history. Stick with me, because by the end, you'll see how these ancient wanderings connect to who we are today and why understanding them could rewrite our shared human narrative. Let's journey back to the dawn of time. Picture the world as it was around 40,000 years ago, during the height of the last glacial maximum. The planet is a harsher place. Woolly mammoths roam the steppes, saber-toothed cats lurk in the shadows, and humans, our anatomically modern ancestors, are just beginning to fan out from Africa and Eurasia. In this era, encounters between different human species aren't myths. They're everyday survival. Neanderthals, stocky and resilient, adapted to Europe's cold climates, vanished from the fossil record around this time, their tools and hearts left as silent witnesses. Denisovans, even more elusive, haunt the caves of Siberia and beyond, their existence known mostly through scraps of bone and the genetic legacy they imparted. In my view, this period represents a pivotal crossroads in human evolution. It's not just about survival, it's about connection. Early modern humans didn't live in isolation. They interbred with these cousins, blending genes that enhanced immunity, adapted skin tones, and even influenced how we process high-altitude environments today. But how did these ancient unions echo across oceans to the Americas? That's where the story gets fascinating. Traditional theories paint a straightforward picture. Humans crossed the Bering Land Bridge from Asia to Alaska around 15,000 to 20,000 years ago, then trickled southward like a river carving its path. Yet recent genomic revelations suggest a far more intricate web of movements, especially in South America, where the continent's vast rainforests, towering Andes, and endless coasts hid secrets for millennia. Let's transport ourselves to prehistoric South America. The landscape is alive with megafauna, giant ground sloths grazing on ancient ferns, armadillos the size of cars burrowing into the earth. Early humans arrived not as conquerors, but as explorers, their stone tools chipping away at the unknown. Archaeological sites in Brazil, like Lagoa Santa, reveal burial grounds where bodies were laid to rest with care, perhaps accompanied by rituals involving fire and ochre paints. In Panama's dense jungles and Uruguay's rolling plains, similar echoes emerge teeth and bones preserved in the soil, holding DNA that tells tales of distant origins. The breakthrough comes from analyzing these remains. Scientists sequence genomes from teeth found in Northeast Brazil, remains just over 1,000 years old, and compared them to older ones from the same region, as well as sites in Uruguay and Panama dating back further. What they uncovered? Traces of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA in these ancient South Americans. This isn't a minor detail, it's a bombshell. These extinct species never set foot in the Americas. Their interbreeding happened way back in Eurasia, perhaps 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, long before any migration to the New World. Yet here it is, preserved in South American genomes like a genetic time capsule. From my analysis, this points to a bottleneck effect in human migrations. As small groups ventured into new territories, they carried concentrated packets of this archaic DNA. In prehistoric times, such ancestry might have provided advantages, 
Neanderthal genes for cold resistance during icy crossings, Denisovan adaptations for high elevations in the Andes. But the study goes deeper. It shows greater Denisovan ancestry in Panama and Uruguay than Neanderthal, suggesting multiple admixture events. Imagine a group of early Eurasians having mingled with Denisovans in Asia, pushing southward. Over generations, as they navigated rivers and coasts, this DNA persisted, evolving with the people. Adding layers to this prehistoric saga is the discovery of migration routes that buck the north to south trend. Genetic links between Northeast Brazil, Uruguay, and Panama, separated by thousands of miles, hint at movements along the Atlantic coast, possibly in waves traveling northward or in circular patterns. This challenges the linear Beringia model. In the Ice Age, sea levels were lower, exposing coastal shelves that served as highways for hunter-gatherers. They might have followed schools of fish, harvesting shellfish with bone hooks, their canoes hugging the shorelines where warm currents met cold winds. I find this particularly intriguing because it humanizes prehistoric life. These weren't aimless nomads, they were strategists, adapting to environments that shifted with the climate. The Atlantic route could explain why some South American populations show unique genetic signatures not found farther north. For instance, the study estimates this coastal connectivity began around 1,000 years ago for some groups, but roots stretch back much further, aligning with archaeological evidence of early settlements. Delving into this, I can't help but ponder the daily realities of these ancient peoples. In a world without metal or writing, knowledge passed through oral stories around campfires, tales of great floods, lost homelands, and encounters with other folk who looked different but shared the spark of humanity. The presence of Denisovan DNA, potentially incorporated 40,000 years ago, surviving in a 1,500-year-old Uruguayan individual, speaks to resilience. It's like nature's archive, reminding us that extinction isn't absolute. Legacies endure in ourselves. But the real puzzle? The Australasian signal. Found in ancient Panama remains and lingering in modern Amazonian groups like the Karatiana, this genetic echo links to peoples from Australia, Papua New Guinea, and nearby islands. How did it get here without crossing Beringia? No traces in North American fossils. The lead researchers speculate non-Beringian routes perhaps across the Pacific via island hopping. Prehistoric Sahul, the combined landmass of Australia and New Guinea, flooded around 39,000 years ago, displacing populations. Sunderland, encompassing Indonesia and Malaysia, submerged by 12,000 years ago. Refugees from these drowned worlds might have taken to the seas. Skilled navigators in sturdy canoes with clamshell sails, trading goods and jeans. In my insight, this evokes a prehistoric odyssey akin to epic myths. Hunter-gatherers without agriculture couldn't linger on tiny islands. They'd restock with coconuts and fish, paddling onward. Modern examples prove it's possible. A kayaker crossed from California to Hawaii in 64 days using basic tech. Scale that to ancient times from Papua New Guinea to Panama, about 9,000 miles, halved by hopping through Polynesia. Austronesians, famed sailors, might have bridged this gap post-glaciation 15,000 to 20,000 years ago. Yet no direct proof they reached the Americas. It's a hypothesis that tantalizes. This Australasian mystery complicates everything. It's sporadic, appearing in isolated samples across time and space, without a clear pattern. Why no North American signal? Perhaps these seafarers bypassed the North entirely, landing directly in Central or South America, or genetic drift erased traces elsewhere. Future studies examining more Polynesian and Native American genomes could clarify. Personally, I see it as evidence of humanity's boundless curiosity, pushing boats into the horizon, driven by necessity or wonder. Shifting back to the prehistoric canvas, let's consider the broader implications for South America's settlement. The continent was the last major landmass humans reached, Antarctica aside, if we're picky. Archaeological data shows complexity, tools in Chile dating 18,000 years old, rock art in Brazil depicting hunts, 
Genomic evidence adds perplexing signals, sparking hypotheses of multiple entry points. The study provides the most comprehensive genetic map yet, supporting Pacific coastal waves populating the Andes first, then spilling to the Atlantic. In analyzing this, I believe it underscores prehistoric adaptability. Early South Americans diverge culturally over millennia. Mass burials in some sites suggest communal rites, while distances bred differences. Northeast Brazil's 1,000-year-old remains differ from 9,000-year-old Southeast ones, yet share ties with Uruguay and Panama, 3,270 miles apart. This isn't uniformity, it's a mosaic, like ecosystems evolving in isolation. To make this vivid, let's draw from real-life parallels that echo prehistoric times. Consider the Torres Strait Islanders, modern descendants of those ancient Sohul peoples. Living on islands between Australia and New Guinea, they're renowned sailors, navigating with star maps and wind knowledge passed down generations. One story tells of a fisherman named Eddie Koiki Mabo, who, in the 20th century, fought for land rights rooted in traditions of seafaring ancestors. Imagine his prehistoric counterparts, a group fleeing rising seas, their canoes laden with stone axes and fire-making kits, landing on unfamiliar shores where they intermingled with locals, blending bloodlines. Or take the Chumash people of California's coast who built tomols, plank canoes, for ocean voyages. Archaeological evidence shows they traded across channels 20,000 years ago, mirroring potential Pacific crossings. A modern Chumash elder once recounted paddling replicas, feeling the pull of ancient currents. These stories humanize the data. Prehistoric migrants weren't statistics. They were families braving storms, sharing meals of roasted tubers and dried fish, their children inheriting tales of distant stars. Another example, the Ainu of Japan, with Denisovan-like ancestry, preserve oral epics of bear hunts and spirit worlds. A real-life Ainu artisan today carves wood, echoing tools from 40,000 years ago. Link this to South America, Uruguay's ancient individual with Denisovan traces might have belonged to a clan venerating similar spirits, their DNA a bridge to lost eras. These relatable vignettes show how prehistoric legacies live on, in genes and cultures, making abstract science tangible. As we wrap this journey through prehistoric myths, the lesson is clear. Humanity's story is one of profound interconnectedness. We're not isolated branches on a tree, but a tangled vine, woven from encounters with extinct kin and daring voyages across vanished lands. Understanding these ancient migrations, Neanderthal whispers, Denisovan echoes, Australasian enigmas, teaches us humility. It reminds us that borders are illusions, drawn by time and tide, and that our differences stem from shared wanderings. In today's divided world, embrace this takeaway. We're all descendants of explorers, carrying the world's history in our blood. Seek your own connections, question origins, and honor the resilience that got us here. Thanks for joining this epic tale. Until next time, keep exploring the past to illuminate the future.